Okay, so we have Speedy, we have Scooty. Welcome and enjoy and have a good time. We're happy you're here. Thank you. Speedy, and today uh, we're gonna talk about open coil, um, what it is, what it is not, uh, our motivation for this project, um, the technology behind it, uh, technology we used, and some funny things we encountered uh, along the way. Um, stay until the end because we will be sharing some of. Um, yeah, our builds, so you can replicate, replicate this yourself. Um, please enjoy the talk. This is all live, so we're not sure what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> but we have a trusted clipboard here, so I'm confident we can do this. How about you, Speedy? Well, we'll find out, right? So um, let's dive right in. Um, what is open coil? Um, you can see a bunch of uh, scooters around us here. Um, open, coil, uh, open coil basically um, is a concept for a mobile art show on um, these dockless uh, electric sharing vehicles or um, in short vehicles that can be rented via app. Um, it ran for one week uh, end of October this year. Um, basically um, the two of us we came up with this concept and we then invited um, 10 uh, artists to um, share their works with us and present them on these e-scooters. Um, OpenCoil uh, builds on uh, the idea of the speed show uh, as well as uh, offline art and um, some uh, maybe some influence of the dead drop as well. All brilliant uh, concepts by um, media artist uh, Aram Bartol. Um, we basically, for Open Coil, we basically took these ideas um, and tried to uh, merge them together into a concept that then um, uses uh, non destructive um, add ons that we can put on these scooters um, to uh, host the artworks by all the individual um, uh, artists. Um, um, basically, uh, once these uh, scooters uh, are modified with our add-on, um, we can release them into the streets and they become available for the public in the whole micro-mobility service area. Um, we came upon this idea because we wanted to interact with these uh, micro-mobility services. Um, when basically, OpenCoil, it appropriates their infrastructure. So one thing that is out there for, for everyone to use, and we, this OpenCoil concept, it appropriates this infrastructure as a decentralized network of, of, of nodes, of scooters, um, and then we can share artworks on all of them. Um, we, uh, the artists, um, we, we, we invited them, we wrote them an email about this idea we had, um, and we told them, okay, so we're looking for uh, small art pieces, art um, that can be stored on um, two megabytes of, of storage. And the result, well, the response was, well, overwhelming to us as well because like we we got immediately got responses from a bunch of really 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 brilliant artists out there and they all helpful and supportive and um, actually created most of the works that you can see or you were able to see in um, the show were created for this show especially and uh, they were all then uh, optimized to be viewed on mobile devices since this roaming speed show is actually well, decentralized, and you would need to 
go uh, into public space, find a scooter, connect with your phone to that scooter via Wi-Fi, and then um, the artwork that was stored on the scooter um, was with was visible for for the visitors of the of the art show. Um, all all of the arts, uh, all of the artworks are um, somewhat uh, concept uh, context specific works. They all deal with um, either movement or um, just capitalism in general. Um, some of them even um, with the pandemic, since obviously this all came about um, while uh, the pandemic was happening. And um, the concept really, um, it, it wasn't really pandemic driven, but maybe accelerated since um, while we were already working on this concept, um, we realized, oh, these, all these restrictions and, um, yeah, restrictions that came upon the general gallery industry or, or where you would go, normally go as an art enthusiast to, to look at art, they were all sort of like limited in what they were able to present, what they were able to offer. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, galleries, traditional, more traditional galleries, they then uh, moved all of their um, available uh, shows to the online. Um, some of them in very uh, interesting and creative ways. Others really just pictures of artworks they have hanging around in their galleries and you could just, just like click through a slideshow. And that basically led to us thinking, oh, okay, so how about we take art, net art that is usually already presented in the online world and take them offline just to show, okay, so there's actually um, maybe different solutions that are still like completely pandemic friendly to present uh, art in the, in the offline space other than just going online. Um, there is a... Uh, for example, this work here, um, it's Sarah Grant's uh, contribution to our show. Um, it's a little mobile game that um, deals with pandemic um, as you have like, you have to fight uh, little coronaviruses um, and it's, it's like based in the city of Berlin, which is where Open Coil first, first happened. So this, this work is really nice to like show how involved the artists were with, with the concept of uh, open coil and, and how creative they, they got and, and to, to develop art that is suitable for this. Um, yeah. Uh, so in short, we, we had a s small gathering here um, in front of the Zentrum für Netzkunst in Berlin to have like a small test opening to like for all the artists and, and friends, friends who like see the artworks and, and for us, for us, test our heart and software, test if everything was working the way we was we supposed. Uh, we we thought that we thought it would work, and uh, we found a couple of bugs. We found a couple of issues, uh, which we then were able to um, solve uh, in in time for the official opening where. We would then release all of the scooters uh, onto the streets of Berlin to be actually fully publicly accessible and then um, watch our scooters move uh, through Berlin. That is basically the whole concept. Um, maybe Speedy can say something, or Scooty can say something about why we even used scooters in the first place. Yeah, so um, like both individually were already like very interested in, in, in this whole move, movement of, of, of these micro mobility services um, in general and, and especially scooters specifically. Um, uh, it, it's, it's very strange to like overnight uh, be confronted uh, in your city um, with a bunch of, of, of like highly technical uh, species uh, occupying the same sort of ecology as, as you are. Um, and this, this really yeah, made us think like, like what are these, these animals or, or things or, or species? 
Um, it, it, it immediately triggered also questions about uh, about public space itself. Um, whereas before it, it might have been, you know, gone unnoticed. Um, but all of a sudden, this, this uh, semi-public space was was occupied by um, like private private uh, companies' uh, vehicles, and it it, it just um, brought up a lot of emotions in, in not only like artists or researchers, but also like in with normal people. And you might have seen the gut reactions of uh, a lot of people who could not park their bike anymore on the streets because it was occupied by uh, a bunch of scooters, um, um, such as yeah, throwing them in, into the river or you know, breaking them on purpose. And yeah, while this a is a reaction coming from from the yeah. people who are, who are engaged, suddenly they all like they all experience the same thing that we experience. That uh, all of a sudden, overnight, there are these thousands of, 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 of new well things occupying the same space that we regularly occupy or that we um, will live in, and yeah, that triggered emotional responses uh, and yeah, a lot of. Uh, critique. Yeah, and it's 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 just very interesting to to see this sheer amount of, of technology that these species are are carrying with them, and how this is sort of uh, dumped freely on the street to to um, yeah interact with. Uh, you know, normally you would use a mobile phone to rent these uh, rent these cars uh, or scooters and drive around. And uh, get charged on your credit card, <laughs> um, but yeah, we we were sort of um, looking for ways to to um, yeah regain sort of agency in this in this sort of newly newly created ecology where uh, seemingly anyone can can occupy or take this this public good. And we were very interested in in the ways how these companies also did this. Um, so yeah, that that also led us to to the to to the next to the next part um, of our sort of interest, um, like how to engage with these uh, uh, scooters, um, not by renting them, but uh, in a sort of public way. So instead of looking for back doors. Or bugs, or whatever. Um, how how can you engage with these these practices of, of sharing vehicles, um, venture capitalism in in ways that are like publicly accessible um, without breaking anything? Um, yeah. Uh, so by, by by sort of chance, um, it was like a year ago. Um, we tried to to like charge a phone on a on a scooter we found on the streets, and it would actually charge it without um, renting it first. Um, so in a way, uh, we discovered that uh, we had like we discovered free energy. And just more or less, yeah. less. Yeah, we we found the first uh, entry point, the first portal of communication. That made it available to us uh, to engage the, sco the scooters um, in, a, in a different way than that maybe the the micro mobility service intended to, and also um, this just opened up, uh, uh, motivated us to do um, to do a different approach. Yeah, so um, there are actually two uh, main ingredients to our project. Um, Instead of actually focusing on on how to publicly approach these things, um, one part is is a software part, and the other part, as said before, is a hardware element. Um, so before going into the software, maybe you can we can briefly explain um, that these models that are shown here um, actually are outfitted with a little um, charging pad. So under under the steering wheel, there's a sort of clip where you can uh, mount your uh, mobile phone on 
and if it's compatible with wireless charging, uh, it will charge your phone uh, while you're driving it around, which is nice because, yeah, if you rent this thing and you run out of battery and you cannot lock it again, uh, yeah, you have a problem. I mean, I don't like this service line um, without a battery. So this is a sort of nice service that goes uh, both ways, I guess. Um, the other part is the, 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 the software part. Um, maybe Speedy, you can yeah, tell us um, about it. Basically, um, after we discovered this first entry point, we just tried to think of, of, of other uh, things that this these micro mobility services will hand us for free that or, or that are publicly available. And um, we found out, okay, so the next major thing uh, that these, that of, of this major like block of information that they will release um, without account, app, anything, is uh, the locations of their scooters and their battery status and stuff like that. It's all if you download their specific uh, serv the specific services app, um, you'll see without even logging in, creating an account, putting credit card information down or anything, you'll already be able to see um, where the scooters are located, um, what is their uh, license plate number or um, I like their their vehicle ID, um, as well as their their battery status and. Um, Basically, we um, looked a little deeper, and then and, and we we found um, um, just lying around uh, on the internet, um, we found a, an API key that was previously discovered by a guy who and discovered put it on by GitHub, a guy who and put it on a GitHub, um, which we found, um, and then this this API key basically um, gave us the uh, capabilities to. Uh, run API requests and uh, like get responses with all the information that we needed to develop our open coil concept further. So um, basically, um, what we did, we we built a website um, for optimized for mobile devices. Obviously, that would then um, allow uh, its visitors to locate the scooters that we had modified and totally those. So not all the scooters, as in all the scooters that would usually show up in your, in your app, um, just the scooters that had our um, art gallery modification on them. And we found out um, about different statuses that these scooters can have through the response that we got from the API. Um, for example, if um, someone rents out a scooter that has the gallery space, its status obviously changes from available to inavailable, so that um, another user of the micromobility services, they wouldn't see the scooter anymore on their app because someone else is already using it. Uh, and we implemented these different statuses in our um, in our website as well to um, better show uh, or, or or to well notify um, visitors of our gallery when um, a scooter becomes unavailable <laughs> because it's either rented out or maybe it's battery drained or it got damaged overnight. All these different things we basically found out while observing the behavior of these um, vehicles over time. And we figured, oh, okay, so there are all these different um, statuses that um, they can be in, um, uh, which we can uh, implement in, 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 our, um, in our website to make, um, to make it more clear to our visitors which uh, scooters are actually available to be located in the wild and, and watch the artwork that is on there. And which of them maybe uh, aren't anymore? Um, yeah, here you can.
practices that these scooters can be in, and uh, it shows um, a lot about the scooters, and it always shows their current location. Um, so as soon as we basically had this, these tools, um, we immediately noticed that uh, as soon as we like put these scooters out, we had very low expectations of like the general life cycle of uh, life expectancy of one of our modules. Because looking at the schools and looking how they were treated by the public, we had we were like very um, curious to see uh, like how long uh, our modules will actually last. And um, just looking at the map and like. Um, reloading it all the time um, to see if uh, something changed. Um, it, it, it was uh, fun. It was, it had us, it had us, it had us, it had us, it has us, it had us um, physically engaged with the scooters again, because we were like sitting at home and um, reloading the website all the time to just like to look where our scooters are, where our babies are whether they need service and we would then like every time something changed every time like a scooter's icon switch to like maintenance or um, battery law or something we would then um, like drive there and look if our module is damaged in any way or if it's like broken if it's still working and through 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 this engagement we um, yeah we've we just um, found out uh, so much more about uh, how these services operate and, and how um, yeah how the scooters are actually used um, and yeah we, we we were taking good care of these like modules that we had put on which is the, the hardware part of our um, of our concept uh, and maybe scooty can tell something more about that. Yeah, so up until now, um, there wasn't a single hack, really. Um, we are we have just been using like uh, publicly available, um, accessible resources um, to build like an uh, alternative infrastructure on top of an existing one. Um, um, as Speedy just showed. Um, we created a map to to track all the vehicles we had outfitted with um, with our sort of hardware implant or parasite, if you like, um, which is basically uh, a replica of the um, uh, existing uh, charging port for your mobile phone on the on the scooter. So um, we have a bunch lying here around, also in real life. Um, and yeah, maybe you can just sort of like walk you quickly through the the technology uh, we developed to sort of harness the the free energy available on these uh, devices, which again is uh, it's a feature, it's not a bug. Um, so if we start um, here, uh, I'm <laughs> sitting right on top of uh, a microcontroller. Uh, with Wi-Fi, um, ESP12F um, that creates a, a, a wireless hotspot and uh, runs a web server that con contains the, the artworks. Um, so uh, anyone uh, could connect to it with a mobile phone or, uh, or a laptop. And um, they will get a, a little pop-up. Uh, on Android, it's sometimes a bit more difficult, sometimes not. Um, it will it will present you the the artwork that's um, that's running on it. Um, if we go a bit further down, there's a a little black thingy. It's a voltage regulator that um, gets um, that turns the, the five volt from the the charging coil into three point three volts for the ESP. Um, if we follow the the green line, it's our Custom PCB we made to sort of snugly uh, fit all the electronics into the, the replica of the, of the charging pad. Um, you'll see a, a beautiful uh, copper coil with some electronics on it. Um, this is a sort of sold as DIY uh, module to create your own um, like phone charging station or device or whatever. 
and uh, it is capable to turn the like the Qi standard uh, wireless charging uh, standard uh, developed for for mobile phones, uh, which is alternating current. Um, it turns it into uh, a direct current of five volts um, that can be in turn uh, used by the ESP after it's been uh, uh, shifted to 3.3 volts. Um, yeah, I mean, we yeah, could uh, say that this um, we use the different versions of this coil in, in the process. And um, originally, this like board set up here, or like just the coil and the and the small uh, board attached to it, is we found these were um, boards that were created to give this wireless Qi capability to devices that uh, didn't have that before. So. Um, basically make everything Qi capable, which is the standard that these charging pads were using. So we just took one of these uh, to charge our, or to just power our um, gallery chip. Yeah, there are also um, other models uh, that are sort of adapters for older phones. So you can turn your old phone into a wireless chargeable uh, phone. Um, some of these, they require some modifications, uh, which we will later share as well. Um, yeah, maybe one fun thing to notice um, is that, um, yeah, there's no way to connect to this thing uh, physically. Um, so, yeah, one of the limitations of uh, two megabytes uh, comes from the fact that um, we can update these uh, microcontrollers uh, over the air. So we can update the, the firmware running on it using a Wi-Fi. And yeah, we actually uh, did not password protect this, uh, left it intentionally open in like the hope that someone would uh, find a scooter on the streets, um, find this, this, this strange module, and then um, yeah, would be able to like repurpose it for its own, uh, for its own goals. Um, one of the sort of goals uh, was to to make it sort of uh, easy to apply, uh, easy to remove, um, and non-destructible. And I think maybe the, the the most important thing, or the most, um, is is not hampered by this uh, or obstructed by this add-on. So you can still uh, charge your phone um, if you put it on the pad. So. Here you see a little slideshow of uh, how to mount our um, yeah, replica parasite. So it easily slides on the existing um, charging pad. Uh, I would say the only difference is um, the rubber uh, anti-slip rings. And of course, our sort of, yeah, hand-painted stencil with the logo. <laughs> Yeah, um, but basically the purpose of this was just to create this um, mostly invisible add-on that uh, um, might then be like will will not be found by um, someone um, who's not looking for it by accident and then be like removed immediately. We wanted it to be like very stealthy. Um, for for it to last longer, I guess. And uh, it, these like shells that we vacuum molded, they like fit snugly onto the original board, and they just snap on. Uh, the the plastic protects the chips inside from the from from the weather. And then yeah, once they are mounted, the ESP gets powered by the scooter, and uh, the Wi-Fi becomes available, and you can just. Um, as soon as you're in range, you can um, see the network on your phone, you can connect to it, and a pop-up portal will show the artwork that is on there. Yeah, so you don't have to be like that close to the actual scooter to uh, view the artwork. Uh, view the artwork. No, yeah. And basically, after we've created this um, thing, we um, then uh, 
we we mounted it uh, onto a bunch of these scooters that we found to be charging, uh, even though uh, they weren't rented. So giving out free uh, power all the time. We mounted them uh, those modules to, to to them, and then yeah, as we said earlier, after our little um, um, opening, uh, um, we just put them out on the streets and. Um, uh, we're hoping uh, that they were uh, traveling, that they will be traveling through the micro mobility service area on them uh, on themselves. Um, and you can see, we um, freed the scooters all uh, within the area of Neukölln in Berlin. And you can see, yeah, some of them basically stayed in Neukölln for the whole duration of the show. Others moved quite far, like to Wedding and uh, Charlottenburg and stuff. Um, but yeah, we were very curious and, 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 and we looked very closely um, into that data. And uh, you can see after maybe two or three days, uh, one of the scooters made a like huge trip to like Spandau, which is actually outside of the normal service area of this um, of these scooters. And we were super curious. Um, at first, we thought, "Oh, this is some drunk driver who over the night took a scooter on a road trip for four hours and ran until the battery died." Uh, and we were very um, <laughs> Uh, worried about our module and we wanted to see, as we said, in the first couple of days we were super worried about them and we immediately um, decided to like step on our bikes and, and bike there to um, see uh, what was wrong with uh, or if there was anything wrong with the scooter, how it ended up there. And yeah, that's how we arrived here. Yeah, that's how this we arrived here. This uh, place here is um, the backyard of a tier service facility. So it imminently became clear to us that uh, it wasn't a drunk driver who drove it here. It was actually one of the service technicians um, that was on a regular basis service, uh, servicing these scooters. And we had noticed the scooter uh, status change to like damage or something. So. We couldn't get to the scooter and remove our module before it was taken here. So yeah, we just followed the API um, here to this location. Um, and uh, yeah, so we found that over the course of this week, um, maybe three scooters ended up here. Um, and uh, as we said, they, they, as we found out, um, there were a couple of uh, workers driving around on these uh, mopeds that you see here in the back. Um, they were moving in and out of the warehouse, and we um, quickly engaged with um, with the workers there. And yeah, we actually, um, this, like as we said, we we previously found this this uh, bug of sorts. We never found out whether uh, the the possibility to charge a phone even without renting the scooter is a bug or if it's a feature. We realize there is a specific number or a specific version of the scooters that are available for this. We realize, okay, there's the those scooters that start with a two set their their IDs will start with a two seven or sometimes a two eight and they will all have a helmet box as we saw in the first picture. They will all have this like black box on their um, steering. Um, and uh, we searched the API for these specific models and then uh, tracked them um, through, the, through the API. And well, it led us here to this um, very real back door into um, the workshop. And uh, yeah, it, it, just this, this new world uh, of, or this new layer of the, this, these these companies became very um, very visible to us, and obviously um, all we cared about was our scooter. We wanted to see if it's still alive, <laughs> if it's still uh, sending a signal. So uh, why don't you follow us into the warehouse? Ta-da! Here we are. 
Um, this is uh, what we found when we Whoa. entered the stream. Yeah, <laughs> all these scooters. Uh, basically, yeah, all of these scooters were um, in need for repair, and there were a bunch of technicians working on them. As we said, we, we talked to one of them, and he was very friendly um, to uh, let us uh, take a peek inside and, and, and take a look at uh, yeah how how these uh, scooters were serviced and yeah a lot of realizations came from that yeah so speedy well, what what actually happened to the parasite yeah did well, you still see it yeah did, did, we immediately did uh, yeah we immediately took out uh, the phone and we searched for the Wi-Fi signal and. Uh, well, Plague Rave 2020, the work by Sarah Gant, it was still there. It was still, uh, the Wi-Fi signal was really strong. We were super like, stoked about it, but looking at all the scooters, and uh, I mean, some of them are completely taken apart. We were sure that um, this this parasite uh, of ours will eventually get, uh, well, found and then and, and be destroyed. Um, uh, so... Uh, we were uh, we weren't able to locate it inside the area. Um, we were also thrown out shortly after taking this picture, because apparently you are not allowed to take pictures in um, this facility. So yeah, um, that was a interesting uh, layer indeed. Uh, on top of just you know chasing scooters on the streets and looking at maps um this this displayed a whole nother level of physicality uh to us and um made us realize actually um what we had become so over the yeah the short short while uh, during the the one week of the exhibition um we actually realized that we, we sort of became a, an ad hoc uh, sharing company ourselves. Uh, we found ourselves uh, running around Berlin, um, trying to you know see how our modules were doing. Uh, also to see if the scooters were still okay. Um, yeah, sort of. Because yeah, <laughs> we... if, if they were fallen over, they yeah we had to put them up again so people would, <laughs> would rent them and, and they would get charged again. So our module. Yeah, we had to take run. care of our gallery hosts. Exactly. Um, so I don't know if that's a symbiotic relationship we were in, but um, and of course, yeah, we, we we also used the API in the same way the company does uh, to track to track your to track our modules. Um, so um, this place here also, yeah, it it it, it just. Blew, blew our minds basically um, that um, you can use this publicly available um, map data basically to f find out where these scooters are going and we were actually surprised to see that they are actually being repaired um, and not just you know uh, recycled um, as you see um, they're actually like sorted uh, by different levels of um, yeah damage uh, here down on the floor, there are some that are where the steering wheel column is like completely broken off. Um, yeah, these will be uh, repaired or decommissioned. Um, we actually de decompiled uh, the ap application used by the people who work here. It can be just found in the App Store. Um, yeah, for each yeah, each uh, micro mobility service, they basically um, have an app that. Uh, it's publicly available that all the users will use to track their scooters. And then there's also an app for all of these service technicians, all of the people who um, go on nightly trips to replace batteries and, yeah, will we'll do what we did for a week, uh, check on check on the scooters. And um, in, in a way, well, yeah, if they need repairing, they will end up in this place. And um, they all have this, this app. For for T Rex, uh, it's uh, they're called rangers, the people who collect them and switch up batteries. And there's a shelter app, which is probably used by the people here inside this warehouse because 
while decompiling it, we found all these new statuses that these scooters can be in where like, they would have very specific um, information about the sort of damage that was done to a scooter, whether it's a GPS issue, issue that brought it here or, or just a like, damaged blinker or steering wheel or something. All of that was sort of like within um, the API that we found. Oh. Yeah. So, um, Speedy, how how many of the of the parasites did we actually end up losing? Yeah, how? that is uh, very interesting because we, um, as I said, we we found this place and we uh, got thrown out of it immediately, and we we were sure to never see our module again, and. Uh, for this specific module, um, it actually took quite a while. Like we talked to one of the service technicians, he said, usually uh, scooters can be in and out of here within days. For our scooter, it took uh, almost two months um, to be back on the street. Uh, as soon as we realized they, that the scooter is back on the street, actually we lost, uh, during this week, we lost in total three modules uh, to this place. And all three eventually came back on the street, so that's a, a good thing. They actually all three um, were able uh, were able to get repaired. And yeah, we did what we did. We tracked them down and we looked at them, uh, and we were extremely surprised uh, to see that our modules were still on there. They were still working fine. They were in perfect shape. The scooters were repaired, and the galleries were back online. Yeah, so a possible explanation for this, um, we basically don't know. <laughs> um, I, we can't believe that that our our like um, add-on is so um, our replica is so well done that a uh, person who works with them daily uh, wouldn't notice in an, in a blink of an eye. Uh, when we would, you know, walk in Berlin on the streets, uh, we would just spot our our models. Um, uh, like instantaneously from across the street without even checking your Wi-Fi or the map. Um, but yeah, another explanation could be that um, these scooters are actually uh, uh, evolving and uh, also migrating. So yeah, as you might have noticed, if you live in a city where these uh, e-scooters are driving around, like almost every yeah three months, there's uh, there's a new model going around. Um, either because older ones are being decommissioned or, or, or whatever. And maybe, yeah, um, our module was yeah seen as just a new, another prototype or a new model roaming the streets. Um, yeah, I mean, these, these per people who work there, they didn't seem to be um, actually working, actual employees of Tier. They seem, this, this warehouse, it seemed to be there before even Tier like it seemed to be this workshop that was there prior to the micro mobility um, industry um, popping up in Berlin, and basically it seemed to us it seemed as if this space was just rented out, and these workers were just told to from now on repair these. And yeah, as as uh, Scooty already said, like within the time frame we were closely engaged with uh, these scooters, we. We've seen probably three different models um, pop on the street, so it's it's not super unlikely that the workers there they just thought this they were meant to look like this. Uh, another funny coincidence. Um, one day we found one scooter had uh, migrated to uh, Marseille in France, uh, possibly <laughs> to look for better weather because uh, <laughs> winter in Berlin is of course very cold and dark um but then we noticed that um it was uh, next to a uh, word which is uh, like a german engineering uh, company and and equipment rental and um, when we uh, actually visited this this space uh, in berlin um we couldn't help notice that the map um showed a word next door as well so there's a there's an interesting connection there, or maybe not. 
maybe it's just coincidence, but two of the scooters that were taken from us, one to Marseille, one to here, they both ended up very close to a good store. So I don't know if uh, there's a connection between those two. Uh, also, the scooter that was migrated to Marseille, it was an older version. It was an older model. And we quickly realized that um, it seems in Berlin specifically because Tier, the company that uh, um, owns all of these scooters, um, it's a Berlin-based company. And it seems that within Berlin, they try to only uh, operate with the latest models. Uh, and older models uh, will be um, either decommissioned or migrated to other locations where um, maybe um, their presence is not as prominent as in Berlin. Yeah, so um, to sort of um, yeah wrap, wrap up our, our sort of approach in this, um, um, it was sort of a way to, to, to get to know these companies and, and these devices and, and sort of try to figure out what it, what they are. Um, we sort of used um, like, like the tactic of, of art or the excuse of art, I would say, um, as a way to, to, to deal with these uh, invading species. Um, but yeah, that's of course only, uh, uh, yeah, one way to, to, to deal with this. Uh, we already mentioned people, um, yeah, um, responding in ways that are um, destructive and, and maybe not so environmentally friendly, um, because these uh, devices, um, although claimed by by all the companies to be like CO two neutral, uh, of course still contain like twenty kilograms of uh, lithium iron batteries, and yeah, if you look around here. Uh, how many? Uh, how, how much material there's like seriously uh, on the streets and being put into this? Especially considering um, uh, the the new models every couple of months. Um, yeah, this thing is just so fast and evolving so fast. And I guess we we can all remember the the pictures from like, China and their bike graveyards because previous to this version of dockless sharing. Uh, Micro mobility. We had the rental bikes. We had all these different companies in Berlin dumping their bikes in the streets in a very similar way to where to like how we came upon these beautiful creatures, and they all disappeared. I mean, in Berlin, you can eventually spot a broken mo bike on a few corners, uh, but the app disappeared from the app store, and basically, they they just disappeared and. Um, they ended up on graveyards uh, in China. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Parasity, or we call this add-on Parasity Gallery. This was just sort of our way to interact with the scooters and then see if like, they will run into a, say, in the, into, to a similar fate, maybe. Yeah, so yeah, um, in our sort of research or, or journey, um we we mainly used the like looked at the api um and sort of reverse engineered some apps to to gain some more knowledge about uh, this, this whole ecosystem um but of course you can also look at um at the economic models of these companies you can go to crunchbase um website and and see who invests in what and and who buys who um, you can follow the Maybe money. There is a connection between Vert and Tier in the end. Maybe you will find that on Crunchbase. <laughs> um, and of course, there's a, the very uh, rich language of marketing uh, that's being deployed by these companies and um, very interesting terms of, of services and, and privacy statements um, where you will actually yeah, easily discover that. Um, yeah, most of the the, the eco friendliness is is mostly outsourced to to third parties. Um, for example, the recycling of tiers is done by Deutsche Recycling. Um, their CO two goals are offset by ClimatePartner.com. And yeah, as Speedy mentioned, this 
this whole space here is it's it's also not owned by it here it's it's another contractor on a contractor on a contractor creating um yeah um a lot of small small jobs uh in this yeah, big all of chain this is of, basically uh, already laid out to be a very momentarily and it seems that all of this is very yeah just a during the the pandemic you would see within weeks uh, whole hospital hospitals will be created and this sort of uh, seems a lot like this this is just a pop up hospital for scooters and um it will exist as long as scooters exist and uh, as soon as they are like they have evolved to the next version of uh, micro mobility um this will be something else again exactly um another thing you can do is uh for example yeah um if you do want to do some non destructive um armchair reverse engineering you can go to the fcc database fcc.io and um yeah look try to see if if um the electronics are registered there and mostly you can find uh, pictures of the actual electronics that are um um uh, inside of these uh, uh equipment um yeah so the fcc is the, the the american sort of um um radio watchdog um taking care of um uh, the spectrum emissions and uh, there's also to... there's also the a way to um do something similar to what we did um decompiling all of the available apps to find a uh, little new entry points as we said the the API key that we um used was previously discovered by someone who did just the same he decompiled the tier app and he found this API key just hard coded in there and um we found out that there are different types of uh, API keys uh, out there there are the ones that uh, the users um will use so if you're on an app uh, on an official tier app you'll use a different API key than the one that we are using because for example on the tier app you'll be able to um bring a scooter and like have them blink uh in the street to be more easily located that's for example something that we couldn't do with our key um and there is more to be discovered uh, in within these apps and also as we said the 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 other apps that exist from from these sharing um companies another entry point is the the physical scooter itself um yeah you can notice that on the bottom there's often a large amount of stickers um a lot of times it con- contains the fcc id where you can look up the, the electronics inside but also like the the original manufacturer of these uh, things which are mostly i believe come to come from china and um yeah if you know like the, the manufacturer segway. if you know the manufacturer and the model uh you can look for like um service manuals or uh yeah manuals uh, in general and get to know some of the more features uh, of these devices so for example on on the models of scooters you can see here um there's a little um black bar uh, at the front um on the top of it there's a there's a sort of eye uh, with a led in it um but some of the the um how to say some of the manuals actually um provide a little indication of an optional camera to be built in so maybe that's the the next step of the evolution um that is um sort of scooters can uh, you know observe themselves and their environments um yeah so these were the ways we 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 thought of like approaching this um and we sort of now want to ask you like um or offer you a little hand in 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 how you could possibly approach this um yeah earlier this year we did um a workshop um around this topic um in um BKV in Stuttgart and we um basically um 
we had already uh, come up with uh, this concept of ours, this concept of the roaming speed show, and well, we were sure that this single uh, this single entry point of the charging pad, this this option for free um, electricity, um, it could be like our our way of using it is just a one little uh, like possibility that is out there. And we were doing this workshop, we actually um, had a couple of wooden adapters made that would also snugly fit into the um, into the um, smartphone uh, holder with the Qi coil. Um, and uh, it would allow the participants of our um, workshop to create their own add-ons to, um, to see uh, for possibilities to, for themselves to um, sort of um, increase the the value of these scooters to them personally, because we found that a lot of people were criticizing these scooters simply because the solution that they that the the, the micro mobility industry um, said that they were they were this this beautiful climate neutral solution to uh, um, a mobility problem that uh, existed in um, in urban areas, we found that um, this solution, this scooter solution, to a lot of them, doesn't exist. It's 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 useless. These scooters are useless. They are not solving this this problem for a large part of the people. And we were just thinking, okay, so if these scooters are here to stay, and um, what is the only good thing that they can offer? Well. It's a large infrastructure, and it's free energy for some of them, at least. And uh, we invited uh, participants of our workshop to um, just think of more ways, other than the gallery at all, think of more ways to um, engage with the scooter and uh, increase, um, well, usability or, or just value um, of these scooters. PCB is uh, that we created for the um, for the gallery is just put inside the wooden block and um, instead of powering this Wi-Fi chip, you could just use the power to power whichever other um, um, device you want. Um, in this case, uh, a toothbrush for I don't know, free charging up to toothbrushes on the street <laughs> for whoever that is. Uh, a thing. A thing. It's the new thing, I heard. It's the new thing, I heard. I heard too. Yeah, so um, in the end here, we basically want to take the same approach. We want to invite, uh, invite everybody um, to maybe think of uh, solutions themselves, to maybe think of... Um, um, a way of communicating with these scooters themselves um, to just get a better understanding of the industry, um, of uh, the way the industry works, and the way we can actually um, benefit, we as the general public. Because obviously a lot of the stuff from these scooters is, is actually not uh, for the public, or at least not for the general public. And um, we invite you to actually think of um, um, hacks, uh, add-ons, modifications, word um, that um, that will for you solve this uh, solve solve a problem. Um, we have created this GitHub where we share um, a couple of nice uh, goodies with you guys. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we're actually uh, intentionally not sharing um, our sort of original Wi-Fi uh, module schematics and code because we think that you can, can do that. That can be found in Berlin still. We share exactly. all of the information on the gallery um, add-on. If you actually go to Berlin, find our scooter that we um, provided in the Open Coil show. And um, yeah, you can log on to the Wi-Fi and download all the schematics there. But this is something different. 
Yeah, the URL for that you can actually find on uh, on GitHub um, on the at the URL you see above. And now our server will die. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. Um, yeah. So on the on the GitHub you will find like plans um, how to modify uh, like cheap um, cheap adapters to work uh, with these cheek coils. Um, you will find a, a positive uh, mold for vacuum forming your own uh, adapter that's 3D printable. And um, you will find the, the wooden block that's uh, either uh, laser cuttable or CNC-able. Um, yeah, this is really nice because there's holes and you can just you know use a hammer and, a, and some nails to, to, to mount whatever you want on this. Um, yeah, maybe to, to sort of wrap up this kind of technical talk in some ways. Um, this is, of, of course, not a purely purely technical project by uh, two brilliant artists. Um, this, this project is, is, you know, running for half a year now. Um, it's, uh, it's like an accumulation of, of uh, social contacts and friends and um, uh, spaces, but also knowledge that has, has been, um, you know, um, uh, be, been exchanged over, over at least 10 years time. Um, so it's, it's actually a very, very big social part in this project. Um, yeah, and in the same way, I think we believe that um, also just dropping technology on the streets is, isn't going to solve like uh, social issues or envir environmental issues. Um, and yeah, we want to sort of yeah, connect with you and, and try to think of yeah, try other to ways. Think of other ways to do this to actually, um, yeah, make something, make a difference uh, in, in, in this industry. Because um, they think uh, um, there are enough um, possibilities, enough entry points, enough front doors, really, um, to to engage with the scooters to like, find out uh, stuff about them. And, yeah, um, and to sum this up, yeah, we just want to give, uh, in the end, we want to give a shout out to all the participating artists, like uh, everyone who um, was like immediately on board providing uh, incredible artworks uh, for us to present on our modified scooters. Um, um, we are very, very overwhelmed that oh, like just that so many artists were even like uh, considering participating. It was really overwhelming and we um, want to like give a huge thanks to, to everybody who um, work with us on that. We, we also want to mention uh, Zentrum für Netzkunst, uh, who uh, hosted our opening um, event, especially Teresa. She like, did a lot of work for us. Um, uh, and yeah, all of this just wouldn't, wouldn't have been possible without um, this community of, of, of artists and, and just random friendly people who um, helped us with, with this. Um, thanks. <laughs> And thanks to the CCC for hosting us. It yeah, was a real honor. thank you. Um, let's go to Q and A. Let's go to Q and A. Go to GitHub. Download our stuff. Hack some scooters. Find solutions to wow. problems. That's so nice of you. Thank you so much. See you. It's been a real, yeah, totally new perspective on on these uh, strange little things that's crowding all the streets everywhere. Even if I already thought, um, what about cars? The cars need much more space. Maybe that's another idea. Yeah. Um, yeah they're just much more di difficult to hack, we found. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe we should have an, an outside hack. But I just wanted to say um, we're very sorry. We had some problems with the, with the audio um, in between. It wasn't too much, but um, still very, very sorry for that. And um, unfortunately, we can also not um, guarantee that it's going to be better on the media CCC DE. But it was still okay. 
um, you know, in, in Germany, <laughs> it's all still Neuland, so maybe Chaos. maybe we just need to be a little more patient. Um, let me just uh, jump in here and um, repeat once more uh, the GitHub address. That's github.com slash speedy minus scooty slash open coil. And while we're at it, we're very happy if you would also give feedback for the um, for the talks. You can do that in the uh, far plan, um, not in the Blinky fancy app um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the normal far, uh, far plan, and there's a feedback link, and um, you can tell us what's been good, what hasn't been good. Um, of course, we know there's sometimes technical problems, but I already heard that the Tagesschau, which is our biggest news show in Germany, uh, public television, they even had to uh, stop their um, show today because of problems. So we're not the only ones. We're not alone. <laughs> and yeah, um, we have a lot of questions and... Finally, we also have a lot of time, so um, I hope that we're ready now to maybe switch to these questions. Let me just check that. Okay. So, first one about the uh, maybe they clustered for for different topics. Maybe you want to choose a topic first um, about the project in general, about the implant, um, about the API, about the hardware, about off topic. What what are you going to start with? Off topic. Off topic. Honestly. Sure. Of course. Okay. Are you aware of any backup doors? Uh, back doors with these scooters. Not really. I mean, we're not even uh, sure that what we have found is actually a bug. We, we've just found this open coil um, that gives out free energy. And we're not sure if that's a bug or a feature, actually. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a feature in a way that, um, yeah, you're like allowed to charge your phone um, when you rent it. So, yeah. 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 Um, maybe there's someone in the audience who can sort of enlighten us about this. Maybe. Please drop a note on Twitter um, with the has hashtag um, RC2, uh, RC32, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, or on IRC. Um, next off topic question How did you do this awesome presentation? <laughs> I uh, know. <laughs> oh, green screen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been nice to go outside while not going outside. Okay, next topic. Yeah, it, yeah, it was like the only way that we could be together and yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's it's, it's nice to see. Yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, hardware implant API or project? You choose, Scooty. <laughs> oh, uh, API. API. Is this API still open? Yes. Yes. Obviously. Please don't close it. We want to do this show another time, please. another place. Please. please, please don't close it. Or you take the next the car project, remember? <laughs> okay, what are the most yeah. interesting, funny, unusual things that you have seen with the API? Ooh, that's a very good question. Uh, there were some some funny um, repair statuses, like <laughs> uh, destroyed or something. Uh, yes, some were really obviously pointing towards decommission. <laughs> <laughs> highly decommissioned. Highly, um, highly decommissionable. Yeah, and, yeah, and just the general stuff that we figured out. Oh, okay, so apparently the scooter that was in Berlin two days ago is now in Marseille. This this alone was a, a, a 
weird coincidence. And then I don't know if you've noticed, but um, the the during the screen recording of our website, you could actually see that currently one of the 11 scooters we chose um, to host our add-ons uh, moved all the way to Potsdam, which is also definitely outside of service area. And as far as we can tell, there, it's not another workshop. It's just a residential area. And uh, maybe someone uh, check it out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. Drop us a line. Have you seen any interesting moving patterns on, other than the trip to the repair facility? Okay, we had that, I guess. Um, okay, maybe we go to implant now. Is that okay? Or hardware? Sure. Okay, implant. so uh, sorry if it was already said. How expensive is the implant? If you buy it in bulk, it's it's around uh, five euros, I would say. Okay. Yeah, it depend. It really depends on on like the scale you want to do this. Obviously, we bought a, a bunch of uh, ESPs and stuff. We because as we mentioned before, we we were expecting these things to la to not last as long as they they did, and um, we bought a bunch of them. So um, we got them for very reasonable but also we had some is issues um, with delivery on time um, out of like China obviously uh, doing uh, due to corona uh, in a way um, so we had to last minute switch to a, to a more local uh, supplier and um, this supplier he, like he only had these these uh, these adapters that you would plug into smartphones, older smartphones that that don't uh, have wireless Qi capability. So we just ordered a bunch of these adapters and then uh, we like took them apart and just like we just like took the parts we needed and and they uh, and they didn't work. <laughs> yeah, at first they didn't work. We had to like look at a picture of the the version of this hardware component that we previously had and we realized oh just by comparing the two pictures we realized oh there are like two more components on this board and we we just soldered them off and uh, bridged uh, like two pins and then they worked again so there was a lot of um weird quirky like uh, sort of hacks that we had to uh, um had to do just um, to um um, get the get the modules working in time and obviously if you're like if you're on this tight schedule then um things might get more expensive but yeah it's yeah, always five euros versus money um did the te technicians find any of your implants yeah as far uh, as we know they didn't well, or maybe they took them to Potsdam. Uh, maybe, hey, yeah. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe we go to hardware before we come back to the project in general. Um, I okay. think the hardware of some of these devices is open source. Do you have an idea where to find a plan to copy it? Um, I guess the devices are originally attached. I saw. I, I didn't get the last part. Um, that's an. Uh, that's another comment. Um, that uh, belongs to, to it. Uh, I guess the device is originally attached. Oh, no. The, the plan of the, oh, the, copy of the, the plan. charging, the charging pads, the charging yeah. pads. They are attached to the scooters. They just come with the scooter. Um, as yeah. we said in our presentation, you can try to like go through FCC's website or um, uh, just look at the serial number and, and, and FCC numbers on the scooters themselves to find out more about the hardware that's inside these the scooters and inside the charging pad that is attached to the scooter. And when it comes to our hardware, um, that the, the, the gallery module that we uh, attach to the scooters, that um, we we haven't we did made it we did make it publicly available, but only if you find our scooter in Berlin and uh, log on to its network and download the contents. We will not share it online ever. It's gonna be offline on a scooter in Berlin for as long as the scooter exists. Okay. 
Why didn't you just open the battery pack to get voltage and place the module there? Um, this is, this I don't know. Um, I think uh, these batteries run on 42 volts or something. Uh, yeah, and also we were about to there, find a hack that's non-destructive. We, we had already seen all of this destructive criticism uh, of these scooters. We've only already seen what, uh, how people um, in general react to these when they don't like them. And we just wanted to find a more clever way of, um, of dealing with it. And um, there are probably a lot of possibilities to uh, gain access to uh, the power or, or even other features of this, um, uh, these scooters. And uh, you're free to do uh, modifications on scooters yourselves. But we, for this project, we wanted to uh, look for a uh, stealthy, non-destructive, non-invasive uh, parasite that would just extend um, the capabilities of the scooter without interfering with um, with its uh, original uh, purpose. Business model. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you could try uh, mounting like a, a bicycle dynamo on the on the wheels, maybe. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why not? Um, okay. Anything else you want to add to the technical uh, specifics? No. Okay, then project in general. What are the reasons to decide to make the gallery available for only a few days? I'm not sure uh, if, if this maybe was a misunderstanding, but... Um, no, it's sort of a sort of understood correctly. The show, uh, the open call show, it only ran for a week in Berlin. That yeah. is due to um, one uh, one reason was that we just didn't imagine this this module to last that long, and we didn't find out until long after the show that it would actually um, survive a trip to the warehouse. So uh, after a week, we thought, okay, this is just too too much work. Because as we said, we were uh, really like on our bikes every night, checking on these modules, checking on these scooters. It was a lot of work. And um, yeah, this was just not, we couldn't keep this sort of, um, we couldn't we couldn't be a sharing company for forever. Yeah, maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe there's another way to document it in some some way or so. Well, well now that we know that these modules are way more durable than we imagine, we, um, as we said, we are thinking of, or we definitely want to um, repeat this show uh, in uh, another time, another city, because. The good thing about these scooters, they're everywhere now. And um, as far as we can tell, this uh, solution that we came up with, it, it works in every city. So um, you're, uh, we also hope that we can repeat this somewhere else some other time and maybe um, have it be available longer or actually for as long as they will last. Yeah. Yeah. Are there plans to make roaming galleries of, of, on other types of infrastructure, like cars? Um, or in general, what um, what are you planning to... Do you have any plans what you want to do with it in the future? Is there anything coming up? That's a very, very tough question. <laughs> <laughs> now, first... We go for the cars. Maybe we can do like a like a project where people can join in freely. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, uh, th there have been like like uh, many historical examples of you know uh, um, you know public free uh, shared uh, infrastructures and um, a lot of art projects as well. Uh, for about Netless, uh, for example, by Dania Vasiliev, um, using the the um, subway uh, carriages to carry uh, like mesh network routers. Um, you had this uh, tram jam uh, project that used trams as uh, musical sequencers. Um, 
Very nice projects. Uh, so something I can imagine is maybe like a collaboration with Freifunk, uh, providing mesh me Wi-Fi mesh nodes uh, on, on roaming devices. Um, but yeah, it's it's really hard to sort of uh, see the future in in times like this. Yeah, maybe you should go out and find them out there and just have it. Go have out and find them. It's is indeed. In in the RC2 world and chat about it. Um, I exactly. still get in our comments. Uh, one of our live stream chatters uh, just shouted to please share the API key. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. go Google is your friend. Google is yeah, your friend. There's this, git, there's this no, GitHub. No, 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 I don't know, but okay. <laughs> I, don't I, I will, yeah, from firmly speaking. I know, I know. Yay. Um, is there maybe, um, if there's more questions or interest, um, is there maybe a place, an assembly or a special bar where you're hanging around uh, later on or tomorrow here at the RC2 World? Um, I'll see free. Now, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> later out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually, yeah. Um, I would like to hang out in the hardware hacking area of the... The workshop area in the in the world it's a nice space so um yeah maybe you can type the api key there i mean copy paste it it's a bit long to to you know mention it here it'll take all night <laughs> okay uh obviously this question is very interesting so they keep keep putting it back. So have you seen any interesting moving patterns other than the trip to the repair facility? <laughs> Seems to be very important. So what have you what have you been uh, finding out? Well, it was just interesting to see um, from what we could tell by looking at these 11 scooters specifically, we um, well, they were mostly uh, being moved uh, during the night or like uh, evening, morning um, times, and not so much during the day. Uh, they, some of the scooters we uh, selected, they've never they've never moved out of Neukölln. One scooter didn't move a single time uh, during the whole time we we watched it, and others made uh, really long trips, uh, as you could see in the animation. There, uh, one was like going crazy towards bedding and then um median kobebitnik scooter was just like after one day it was in charlottenburg and like <laughs> uh, alone <laughs> yeah one one interesting thing is uh for me was that um the the rangers or the juicers the people who swap the butter batteries um um yeah like at the night of the opening um yeah a couple of our scooters actually ran out of battery. Um, that's when we decided to end the show. And yeah, within uh, five minutes, there was this uh, sixth rental car uh, arriving uh, with a dude jumping out, uh, swapping the batteries. Um, yeah, which... with the perfect uh, the perfect ending to our show. We had just removed the the modules. We had just saved them, and then these like guys jump out the, the this van and then uh, swap batteries on the scooters and it, it, like nobody believed that we didn't actually plan this that it wasn't like a like a theater piece but it, it was just a nice coincidence one of the many coincidences that made this project um, happen in the first place um I just uh, have to laugh because um, we always say we Berliners we don't leave our kids. You always stay in your kids. <laughs> so maybe some of the uh, scooters had the same um, approach to just stay definitely, in definitely. Our bag and not move out of there. <laughs> Most of them. Most of them um, have the... Excuse me? Yeah, you're absolutely right. These scooters seem to have adapted a very similar lifestyle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there are still more questions. Are you still willing to take questions? Sure, sure. Okay. 
Cool. Would you consider doing some work around the badly parked scooters for people who are blind or visually impaired? Did you notice this issue while doing this project? Uh, do you have to repeat that question? Huh? Um, he's asking, uh, those scooters are parked everywhere very badly, and it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous oh, yeah. thing for blind or visually impaired. And uh, you probably noticed it, and um, maybe you could add this as um, as an aspect. Or... Yeah, definitely. There's That's one of the... The many things that we um, invite people to, like, um, maybe uh, look out for. To, uh, I mean, there are a bunch of people listening who are way more talented than we are in um, all sorts of uh, coming up uh, with code and and and, and um, ideas and development uh, ideas uh, to create add-ons for these scooters. And obviously there are, there are problems with these scooters that we didn't even think about. Um, we just uh, try to find one solution that would make them more interesting to us. And obviously um, there there's a need for, for improvement uh, on many levels. And um, yeah, using, using this uh, charger, maybe there's a way to like, mount a sensor on top that would then like give a um, sound feedback to once you're approaching them or something but, mm. um, we haven't thought of anything yet. like a boy or something yeah yeah well thank you so much um at the hardware hacking, hacking area and the um playground area i don't i don't repeat that now um you're scooby and speedy there too scooby and speedy no it's the same name? Mm, You're walking mm, around there like this? No. No. Then you have to find an, a, a way to make yourself remarkable in some way. Well, you can also always drop us an email at mail at opencoil.show. Um, it's probably going to get flooded now, and maybe it'll take a while until we can respond, but it'll okay. get to us eventually. Okay. So thanks so much. That was it. Thank um, you. Yeah. Enjoy the program and have a good time. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for being here. Speedy, Scooty, have fun. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. bye.